going to look into complex numbers. We are going to look into how can we perform complex division, what is a complex plane and various other features and properties of complex numbers. As you all know that this series of videos is meant to make you aware and learn deeply about the mathematics of quantum mechanics. So we are continuing with our learning on complex numbers and as the video will proceed we will learn more about linear algebra, matrices and so on. The entire idea is to make you understand about the mathematics of quantum physics. This is the third video in the series. Earlier we have dealt with complex conjugate and I am thankful to you that you have put up comments and subscribed and view the video. I hope I can meet up to your expectation. So in this video today we are going to look a little bit more into complex numbers. My name is Shaunak and you are watching this video on my channel Physics for Students. So let us look what are the topics that we are covering today. So we will be covering the modulus of a complex number. We will look into what is a complex plane. What are the examples that we can cite so that the concept of complex plane becomes clear. Vectors if we can plot a complex plane. What is complex division. Some of the examples and the famous Mandelbrot set. So having said all those areas I would like to tell you that we, I would be keeping the mathematics and the equations as simple as possible because the basic idea is to make you aware about the concept so that you can understand quantum physics better. Okay, so first we will just quickly go into understand what is called a modulus of a complex number. Now we have seen that if z equals to 5 plus 10i then we have understood what is a complex conjugate and we know what it is. Now going at it with that we, I would like to define the modulus what is the definition. So the modulus or the length of a complex number for example we go with z equals to a plus bi would be uh, z uh, equals to 5 plus 10i is given as z equals to square root of a square plus b square. Right, so I am just taking z equals to 5 plus 10i for the sake. So modulus is given by this. Now since a, both a and b are real, the modulus is always real and positive. Right, so this is the very basic definition of what is modulus. It is basically the length and we draw two vertical bars so that we can take the absolute value. Okay, here are some of the quick examples to calculate the moduli. So if z equals to 5 plus 10i, then we can get this one. If z equals to 3 minus 2i, then what we get is this one square root of 13. And if z equals to minus 3, then what we get is this one square root of 9. And this 3 as I have marked in red is called the absolute value. Further, we see that if z equals to 2i, then it equals to 2. Is also almost a kind of an absolute. So, just to give you a few examples, very simple that how we can calculate the moduli or the modulus of different numbers. Okay, now we come to a very, very important concept of quantum physics. Quantum physics actually rests, I would say, the edifice of quantum physics is built on what is called a complex plane. Now, before we go ahead and understand complex plane, what I would like to tell you is that some of the functions, some of the wave equations, even uh, further areas of quantum physics is built on complex plane. So again as I used to tell that visualization of a particular concept is more important than going further into equations. So before we start ahead and understand what is a complex plane, I would like to show you that you may consider this to be a number line, right? So if this is a number line, the real number negative goes in this, the positive number real goes like this. But if we get a number, say for example 3 plus 4i, then the question is that where do we put the complex number in this number line? Because there is a positive real number and there is negative real number. So where do we put it? So let us have the real number line go left right as usual and have the imaginary number go up and down, right? So we will have the uh, real number as usual going uh, left to right, but we will have the imaginary number go up and down. So in that case 3 plus 4i would be, I would walk 3 units along the real axis this way and 4 units up the imaginary axis and I would like to plot, I would get a plotting 
of something around here. Although mind it that this is just a quadrant example, I am not very precise with rulers etc. So I have just drawn it on computer. So this is where it is. That means that I have to go 3 units along the real axis because 3 being a real number and 4 units up the imaginary axis and that is up towards this. Now you see that this uh, concept again once you try to visualize you will see that uh, in my first video where I have talked about why do we need uh, complex number in quantum mechanics that becomes clear. Now when you will plot Schrodinger's equation wave function anything on the complex plane you can really understand that how things are. Okay so uh, for example if I get this kind of a part for example 4 minus 2i in that case what would happen I would plot I would go 4 points on the real axis and negative 2 minus 2i in the uh, imaginary axis and the point will be somewhat here 4 units along the real axis 2 units down there imaginary axis okay so i just like to want to mention these few points that complex number plane is complex because it's a combination of real and imaginary why it is called plane because it is like a geometrical plane so that is why it is called a complex plane so these are the two most important things likewise you can take further numbers and keep on practicing so that the concepts become clear now one thing you see that these points if it is for plotted on a quadrant or a Cartesian or a complex plane, for example, complex plane, can we consider these numbers to be taken something like a vector? I mean to say, for example, the ordinary vector looks something like this. It has both magnitude, length and direction. Now, if I take the same one, 3 plus 4i, for example, as a vector, as a vector, then how it looks like? Here, here it is. So, it looks like that we can add complex vectors too. So if to add the complex number, we add the real number and then the imaginary part. So it is something like this, 3 plus 5i plus 4 minus 3i. So what we get is 3 plus 4 plus 5 minus 3. I am putting i uh, later and this results to 7 plus 2i. So, <coughs> sorry. So why I meant to, meant to intend to uh, make you understand is that this is basically visualization this is what is called imagination. So once you understand the context of complex plane, now you can easily plot things. Even if you are not plotting some things, when you find uh, quantum physics going further, you will see that you would be able to understand where the point or the particular graph is. You can consider this to be a vector also and just like vector addition, we added the real part and kept the imaginary part aside. Also, another important is that if you go ahead with this 3 plus 4i, then on a polar coordinate, this is also important, in a polar form, we get this kind of a value, 5, 0 0.927. So the complex number 3 plus 4i can be shown at a distance of an angle 5, this is quite random, and angle is 0 0.927 radians. Remember, this is tricky. Question is that, how did we do that? So, how did we perform this calculation? Let us quickly uh, get some examples. So, we know that r equals to square root of x squared plus i, i squared. So, we take 3 squared plus 4 squared and then we get something which is equal to 25 and uh, finally it is equals to 5. So, we got this 5 number. You can just keep a note. I made it a red box. There is a reason for that. And further, if we take uh, theta equal to tan inverse of y upon x and further go expanding that we get 0 0.927 <coughs> this is also important so what we got is that if we go back and calculate x equal to r cos theta and we multiply the cos theta value with 0 0.927 which we have just got right and then uh, we can uh, yeah so we can calculate this further and we get which is approximately 3 this 3 corresponds to this if you go in calculating y equal to r sin theta and then we get this and this, this also approximately gets to 4. So distance 5 and angle 0 0.927 becomes 3 and 4 again. So this is a way in which we can convert into polar coordinates and the values approximately goes back to the same. So complex number in fact is there is a common way of writing it in polar form which is this one, x plus i y equal to r cos theta plus i r sin theta. Remember, there is a gap, isn't it? 
uh, there's a gap in between. So, I, I equals to R cos theta plus I sin theta. This cos theta and I sin theta is sometimes written as this, right? X plus I Y equal to R cis theta. So, we can write something like this. R plus 4 I equals to 5 cis, right? Uh, 0 0.927, any, anything like that. This is just, just a, a kind of a, a, you know, shortened form of writing the X plus R Y. Uh, I y equal to R cis theta. Okay. So if we if we get uh, this kind of a sa same, we got the modulus. So you know that the modulus of the number is simply we got the distance. So I consider the distance as zero plus zero point i. The modulus or length of a complex number is the distance between the origin zero point zero plus zero i and that point is representing here as z. <coughs> you can see that this uh, z is being plotted okay so if we get a squared plus b squared equal to modulus of z square and we get z equals to z and the complex conjugate then given z equals to a plus b i we get this and we further solve it and we get this value so this is important this is uh, uh, I, I mean to say this is this is quite clear from this that how we get the complex conjugate and further calculate it okay now we come to what the uh, subject of today's video is all about, that is complex division. Now, if you get this kind of a value, right, the first question is that if I 1 plus i upon 2 minus i, first question is that does it even make a sane says, yeah, how do we do this? How do we do this? So, question is that does it make even a sense to divide it by a complex number? Remember that uh, just like subtraction is the same as addition i mean to say subtraction is really just adding a negative number division is the same thing as multiplication right dividing x by y is just to tell in a way that how many times do i have to multiply y to get x quite simple now since multiplication is quite well defined in complex number so is division so just to help you visualize let us uh, find an example so if we take z equals to a plus b i and uh, for example we take 1 upon z equals to 1 upon z multiplied so first what we do is that we are taking the complex conjugate of both the numerator and the den denominator then we are doing the finding the modulus then with this rule we are finding a minus b i upon a square plus b square and then what we are doing is that we are applying the distributive property over here and since a and b are real number, we found a way to express 1 upon z in the usual complex form. What is that? Let us turn the page and see into this. Yeah. So, represent in the usual way. So, here I think the steps are quite clear. Uh, we got the, uh, we got basically the complex conjugate of numerator, denominator, then we found the modulus, then we put it in this form and then using the distributive property, we got it. Okay. So, 1 upon z is we are finding represented in the usual complex form. So, c equals to this and d equals to this. So, this is how it goes. This is how it goes. Let us see another example. 1 plus i uh, upon 2 minus i. This fraction can be resolved as this. Same thing what we done is that we have taken the complex conjugate at the numerator. The numerator's complex conjugate. 2 plus i, 2 plus i, both numerator and denominator, and we got this, and this is how we get to the value. Okay, because complex numbers are applicable, as the main idea of this video series is quantum physics, but today I would like to show you something even, even more beautiful than quantum physics. It is called the Mandelbrot set, and we will just see how complex numbers uh, evolves into certain beautiful things and how beautiful nature is okay so this is the mandelbrot set the set was defined and drawn by robert w brooks and peter maletsky around 1978 as a part of study of kleinian groups let us not go into what is a kleinian group in 1980 bennett mandelbrot obtained a highly quali high quality visualization for the set while working at ibm's Thomas J. Walton Research Center in Yorkton Heights, New York. 
So it is basically it is a plot of what happens that we take the simple equation z square plus c where these are both complex number and feed the result back into z time and time and time and time again. And the color shows something like this. Here is an image made by zooming into the Mandelbrot set. So black means it stays within a certain range and here it is the center of the previous one zoomed even further. So as I told you that because quantum physics is beautiful, Mandelbrot set is even beautiful. So you see the beauty of complex number, it shows a beautiful kind of a structure which nature, nature preserves within herself and isn't it beautiful until we today study complex number, we won't be able to see the beauty of the nature and that of the Mandelbrot set. Okay, so here is coming up uh, some uh, trivia, some facts which are quite fascinating. Uh, we just knew that uh, complex numbers are basically extension of real numbers. Question is that is there an extension of complex numbers? Yes, these are called quaternions and are very useful in applied mathematics, physics, computer graphics and computer vision and it is denoted by this capital H. Question is that is uh, these, these are also non-commutative in some way. So A into B is not equal to B into A. Uh, is uh, not equal to this, right? So, a uh, question again is that is there an extension to quaternions? Of course, there is. So, this is quaternions applicable to four dimensional hyperspace. So, quaternions, so from real number, we got complex, complex to quaternion, and from quaternion, is there is an extension? Yes, these are called octonions, and they are non commutative, they are also non associative. That means A. B and C, if they are arbitrary octonions, then A plus B plus C is not necessarily equals to A plus B plus C. Octonions can be seen as a point in eight dimensional hyperspace, although not as studies as quaternions, octonions do have some applications in string theory and special relativity. The next question which is cropping in your mind, I understand, how about the extension of octonions? Sadly, it doesn't exist. So that's it for today's video. It is short, crisp. I gave you certain uh, ideas about uh, uh, division, uh, complex numbers, how you can visualize it uh, using vectors and complex numbers and few trivia, which would keep the food for thought in your mind and it will make you happy. So what is the agenda for the next video? Next video, I would be covering Euler's formula and polar form. So that's it and once we com complete Euler's formula and polar form, we are ready to jump into the next big jump in quantum mathematics of quantum mechanics that is linear algebra. So I would be starting with a fresh series in the same with linear algebra which would help you to develop more into quantum physics. Thank you very much for watching this video. Stay safe, stay happy, eat healthy and please do subscribe to my channel Physics for Students. Put up your comments, click on like, click on the bell icon to get all the notification from Physics for Students. This is Sean Ock signing off for today, promising you to be back with a very interesting video on physics and mathematics. Up till then, goodbye and stay happy. Thank you for watching this video. We appreciate your time and patience. If you want to connect with us and provide further feedback, comment or suggestions, please email us at contact.physicsforstudents at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn. See you soon in the next video.